Hi everyone, Dr. Brian Stenzel here with this week's Wellness Wiki. Is your cookware safe? Ever since I started to get consistent with writing the weekly messages and posting them on the Wellness Wiki blog page, I've been asked to share lots of healthy recipes. While I do have tons of recipes that I'd like to post, something that I always want people to take into consideration when preparing cooked food is the type of cookware they are using. Not only can certain cookware destroy nutrients like vitamins and minerals within the recipe, but some cookware could actually be damaging to one's health by leaching harmful chemicals and metals into the food. People that know me personally know that at home I only cook with one type of cookware, and of course I encourage others to use the same. Therefore, when I post healthy recipes, I intend to have versions of the recipe that are suitable for both the cookware I use and appropriate for any standard cookware you may currently have. Within the variations of using my fancy cookware, some differences you may notice will be decreased cooking time, less prep time, particularly when it comes to chopping, less need for oils, and whether it's done stovetop or in the oven. In fact, even though we cook meals at home almost every day, we very rarely use the oven, which saves time and money. This post is going to explore different types of cookware and try to make a case for you to consider updating your cookware with something you'll never need to replace again as it has a lifetime warranty. The post will also be used as a reference point in the future for when I do share recipes. Most people do not consider the effects cookware can have on one's health, especially for babies and toddlers. However, it has a significant impact and can be a leading chemical stressor causing toxic overload in your body. We know that air pollution, water pollution, and many household chemicals can be hazardous to your health and that of your family, but what about the material you cook your food on? So what about your current cookware? Is it safe? Traditional stainless steel. So many people feel safe with their typical stainless steel cookware, which is referred to as 18-8 or 1810, which is the ratio based on the percent of chrome and nickel added to the alloy. Stainless steel cookware is made from a metal alloy consisting of mostly iron and chromium, along with differing percentages of molybdenum, nickel, titanium, copper, and vanadium. Unfortunately, this ratio of stainless steel allows other metals to potentially leach into the food you're cooking. The principal elements in stainless steel that have negative effects on a person's health are iron, chromium, and nickel. Nonstick cookware. Many people are already wise to the fact that nonstick surfaces can be detrimental to one's health, especially since they can scratch, chip, and flake very easily. Exposure to Teflon resins at temperatures above 393 degrees Fahrenheit may produce a condition termed polymer fume fever, characterized by flu-like symptoms such as chills, fever, body aches, nausea, and occasional vomiting, according to the Federal Aviation Agency Occupational Health and Safety Bulletin. A chemical C8 used to make nonstick coated pans has been linked to birth defects in humans and cancer in laboratory animals. The chemical is also present in the blood for up to four years and can show up in the breast milk. Cast iron cookware. Well, how about cast iron cookware? Iron is the most porous of all metals, and when it heats up, the pores of the metal expand. When the iron cools, the pores contract, close, leaving the grease trapped in the pores and allowing the oil to turn rancid. Some people believe that they can get nutritional iron from cast iron pot. In reality, iron comes in a ferrous and ferric form. Ferrous iron is in your red blood cells and comes from certain foods, is more absorbable in the body, and is extremely important for your body to function properly. Ferric, however, is the type of iron found mostly in cast iron cookware, and your body cannot assimilate this metal as easily. Too much ferric can have significant negative effect on one's health. Cast iron cookware is very durable, but iron is constantly leaching into the food, changing the enzymes in it. Iron can reach toxic levels in the body with regular use and becomes a pro-oxidant which causes stress, oxidation, and eventually disease. While there is some evidence in a small study that iron-containing cookware can potentially reduce iron-deficient anemia in children, further research is needed regarding both the efficacy and safety of this intervention according to the authors of the study. There is still a lot of debate out there about whether or not cast iron cookware is a good way to get iron in your diet. In my family, we prefer to play it safe and get our iron from our food. Then there's aluminum cookware. Aluminum cookware is one of the most common types of cookware to use, but it can be very toxic and is a heavy metal and is absorbed into all food it's cooked in. The aluminum re released into the food during the cooking ends up in your body. Excess aluminum has been associated with estrogen-driven cancers and Alzheimer's disease. 
According to Dr. A. McGuigan's report on findings for the Federal Trade Commission in Dr. Case number 540 in Washington, D.C., he said all vegetables cooked in aluminum produce hydroxide poison, which neutralizes digestive juices, producing stomach and gastrointestinal trouble, such as stomach ulcers and colitis. It's also worth noting that the sale of aluminum cookware is prohibited in many countries around the globe. Then there are other types of cookware, such as glass, enamel, ceramic cookware, which all seem pretty harmless, aside from them being notorious for poor heat distribution, which can cause them to, the foods to stick, burn, and chip off into the food, but they also may contain lead and cadmium. Copper cookware is popular because it conducts heat very well. However, it releases copper into the food and usually has nickel in the coating, which is another toxic heavy metal and can be allergenic. If you do choose to use copper cookware, which I don't recommend, avoid cooking vegetables in the copper pots as copper can kill vitamin C, vitamin E, and folic acid. The cookware that I choose to use for my family and recommend to my clients and friends is made of a non-porous stainless steel 316 titanium. The type 316 alloys are more resilient to general corrosion and pitting uh, than the conventional chromium uh, that's out there like the 304. 316 surgical stainless steel is used in various applications, including surgical instruments, ocean oil rigs, nuclear waste materials, and of course, cookware. 316 titanium stainless steel interior has demonstrated to provide higher resistance to chemical reaction with the acids and enzymes in food, protects the quality, purity, and flavor of the food, resists pitting, and resists corrosion and oxidation. There are a few different companies that compete in this elite space of cookware. I choose to use the product produced by Salad Master. Not only do I feel that preparing my food in 316 titanium, but Salad Master also has a unique patented vapor valve that allows you to know when, redu when to reduce the cooking temperature to maintain many of the vitamins and minerals, and it creates a semi-vacuum that locks in the moisture. It has this little clicking sound and tells you exactly when to lower the temperature. It's awesome. Additionally, Sal Salad Master has been around since the 1940s, and its products are manufactured by a company that's been around for over 100 years, making it one of the oldest and most reputable companies in the cookware space, and the products come with a limited lifetime warranty. Salad Master cookware is a bit pricier than other brands, but the health benefits and energy savings are of rarely needing to use my oven outweighs cost by far. Additionally, I've had my cookware since 2008, and it still looks like it's brand new. Just by virtue of the fact that I will never need to replace my cookware makes the extra upfront cost well worth the investment. I hope you enjoyed today's Wellness Wiki, and if you loved it, share it with others, and be sure to subscribe to our Wellness Wiki page.